Hey, all right, I think it's about time I showed you how to make a table. The foundation of the table is made from XPS foam panels. I chose XPS because it's lightweight and tough and water resistant. To join the panels together, I use a foam safe silicon adhesive. The silicon provides a bit of flex between the panels and that will help the table lay flat. To clean up the edges and hold everything together, I use PVC angle bar. This stuff is cheap, light and relatively easy to cut. To cut PVC, you can use a whole bunch of tools, but I found the easiest and safest way for me was with an inexpensive rotary tool and plastic cutting disc. When cutting PVC, you should cut in the direction the wheel is moving and only use the weight of the tool itself to apply pressure. I'm not very good at using the rotary tool yet. It's a bit tricky, but that's okay. Tools require practice and there's no bad cuts that can't be fixed with a bit of plumber's epoxy and sanding. Especially don't compromise your safety for a clean cut. Instead, take your time. I like to routinely ask myself, am I being an idiot? And sometimes the answer is yes. And then I reevaluate the situation. To fill some gaps in the foam, I use a foam safe construction adhesive that also doubles as a filler. I put a lot of emphasis on the foam safe bit because a lot of adhesives are not and if you're not careful you'll end up with holy foam and nobody wants holy foam. I did a quick and light sand to prep the surface for spraying and I hit the PVC with a whole can of black primer. Now I maybe did three coats over everything and a couple more just on the corners because there was going to see the most abuse. I really recommend buying paint from a reputable brand for this. For this application, cheap paints will not get you far. If you find that your wet paint surface has collected a bit of dust or hair, most likely hair in my case, then don't panic. Wait for it to dry and if it doesn't remove with a quick brush over with your hand, then use a magic eraser. A magic eraser is a very fine abrasive that won't affect the layer below too much. And when you spray varnish on it, you won't even know. I use spray varnish in satin, not only to protect the paint from the hands of sweaty nerds, but also to refract light and hide mistakes in the paint surface. For the tabletop ground cover, I'm mixing a concoction of PVA glue, water, tile grout, sand and oxide pigment. This is a texture and paint all in one and it gives a very realistic finish when it dries. You want lots of PVA glue in the mix to make sure it adheres to the tabletop, but other than that, you can't really mess it up. Mix away, experiment and have fun and make a whole bunch of different colors. I sanded some of the high points on the table to make some of the peaks a little bit less dramatic and that way the terrain should sit more flat on it. For a little bit more colour depth, I mixed in some sepia inks and water into a spray bottle and I sprayed it sporadically around the table, letting it pull in some areas. So for the flock, I made my own. I have a tutorial on how to do that and it's really good, so you should just watch that. Uh, you're going to need a lot of flock for a table and I mixed up a table's worth in about an hour, including drying times. I messed around with flock colours a lot and I changed my mind a fair bit, but that's okay. It's a really forgiving process and it's easy to remove with a vacuum and a brush head if you don't like certain colours. I sprinkled a little static grass around as well, as well as some spongy flock and I think both those things together really sells the table. It pulls it all together and it gives the light something to catch and make little shadows and make it look a lot more realistic. To seal it, I used really watered down PVA glue in a spray bottle. This table is going to get used and abused and over time the flock is going to unstick itself and that's okay. You can always put it back on later and the nice trim around the edges will hold all the flock in rather than go on your carpet. For the hills, I cut them out of XPS foam and I used a kitchen knife to do so. 
I got a little bit clever and I used felt around the edges and this helps the hills stop moving around on the table and it also protects the edges from fraying as they get older. I also backed the hills with a bit of EPVC to make the hills look a little bit more professional and stylish and bring it together with the table. For trees, I used some bulk cheap ones from the internet as well as some random ones I've collected through the years. Uh, because the table is made of foam, if I really wanted to, I could pin these trees to the table. I'm not going to, I'm going to add little bases to them later, but that's a job for another day. I just want to say, don't overthink this project. There's nothing you can really do to mess up that can't be fixed. If something goes wrong, just relax and breathe and keep moving. A big project like this can turn really daunting fast if you let it. And that's how projects end up in limbo, only to be seen again in five years when you clean out your garage. This is the second table I've made now. The first was so riddled with mistakes, I was embarrassed to upload the video. But in the end, it didn't really matter. And the table turned out great. And there was nothing that couldn't be fixed with a bit of creative thinking. So I really wanted to give making a video another go. It took a year to happen. I couldn't really uh, afford to do that until my friend Riley came along. Uh, after seeing how much I wanted to make another table, he commissioned me to make one and not only match my asking price, but he also doubled it uh, just to make sure that I got paid fairly for my time. Uh, it really means a lot and it's something I'll never forget. So thank you very much, Riley. I'll pay the opportunity forward as best I can. Okay, thanks for watching and stay tuned because we'll be populating this table filled with terrain soon.